Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas, the Mandalay Bay for IBM's Interconnect. This is theCUBE's special presentation. Uh, this is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the founder of SiliconANGLE. Join Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.org. Our next guest is Simon Cahey, who is the Link and DevOps web ID at IBM. He's a geek. <laughs> in the developer community, welcome to theCUBE. Actually, we've learned at some of the sure. other IBM events that we shouldn't be saying <coughs> geek yeah, or yeah. nerd or you know. <laughs> but basically, developers, it's a developer tsunami right now. If you've been in the cloud for the de past decade, there's been great goodness around with open source. Now, enterprises are seeing the love and the action and the opportunity. So, give us an update. Blue Mix is new to the park. Cloud perspective, cloud foundry component. It's all done out in the open, and you guys are developing as fast as you can. Talk about what you're working on and what's the hot hot thing right here for you. So, so what we're working on, and what I'm working on in particular, is how are we going to make developers successful uh, bringing their applications to Bluemix. Uh, so in particular, um, right now, if you look at all of the, all of the cloud space, uh, what you'll find is that people are primarily using cloud as a, uh, a, a target, a deployment target for their application. And so what we're working on uh, is making it possible for, for developers to directly build their application in the cloud uh, without having to uh, do an additional step where they're doing uh, local development. It's a big challenge for developers right now. Obviously developers are fickle. They want reliability. They don't want, they want to have ease of use. DevOps has shown that infrastructure as code, that direction is totally viable. But you got open source, which is a collaborative right. mo model. Workforce all over the place. So GitHub's done great, you know, yeah. sharing code. That's now the standard. How does that relate to what's going on in real time in the cloud for developers? Uh, developers are a fickle bunch. I think it's, um, I, I think the space has changed in the last sort of uh, years. 10 years ago, you found everyone go using an IDE like Eclipse, and they'd spend their whole day there. Um, you know, with the cloud and, and certain, the web, certainly, uh, what, you found, what I found is that developers are now, they use a bunch of different tools. Uh, I think, take is that what developers are it's this is hard to do You're a bunch of different tools so they're looking they're looking for ways to simplify their workflows to automate uh, everything that they're doing um, so that they can so that they can build their applications as quickly as possible debug their applications uh, all the sorts of things that are part of you know the the developer life cycle. When so, so I got to ask you the question, because this, this is all we talk about with developers, because it's like a new way, an old way, and then once you're on the, tr the, the bandwagon, there's a little bit of a, of, a, of a hipster kind of developer faction, where it's like, okay, I'm used to this, this is the DevOps model, right. everyone's embracing DevOps, so you're seeing a polarization of a couple concepts. Stakes mean things you have to have minimum. Right. Okay, and then there's opportunities. Live right. sync is one of those things we were talking before, one, um, that you're working on. So break down what's the table stakes that has to be in place to be truly DevOps with Bluemix, and what innovations is Live Sync part of the table stakes? Is it part of the innovation piece? And because see, I want to see everything that I've had before, and I want to make my life easier, right. reduce the steps it takes to do stuff, and not go <laughs> and be, right. be be cool <laughs> or so, whatever. So the way I see it uh, is that yeah, the table stakes are, are shifting very very quickly. Um, a lot of the a lot of the cloud stuff is very new. Really, it's I mean it was around three or four years ago, but the quality really wasn't there. So I think one of the table stakes that's coming along very very uh, rapidly and important developers is the quality has to be there. The quality of your fabric fabric has to be uh, excellent, and and uh, I think is is you know the, your, your initial uh, your initial table stakes. Um, but foundational meaning from a foundation. Now my concern is primarily the tools. So I think that um, your tools have to make it so that so that you're seeing the truth of what your application is doing in the fabric. <laughs> yeah. You know, is it started? Yeah. Is it stopped? Is it pitting the CPU? All of those sorts of things. Um, and that's so I think that's your sort of the base level. But um, where I think we go a little bit further is, is that you 
you can run your app in production, but you can't. You still can't effectively um, develop your develop your app in a in a production cloud in, production cloud environment. Um, you still have this huge cycle where you have to compile all your code and then sort of hope to the best. And so people end up having to set up a production environment, a QA environment, a development environment, and that all makes sense. Um, but really, uh, you know, I think LiveSync is beginning, LiveSync is, is, is what we have in Bluemix. There's other, there's other similar plays going on in the industry. Um, and and the, the real advantage here is it lets you, um, you know, understand what your application is actually going to be doing when run, running in in the cloud environment. Uh, and there's also a setup involved around your service. In some cases, you won't have services that you can easily replicate in a local environment. Like, can you imagine trying to replicate a my local Watson or, or something like that? Um, so, you know, increasingly, I think that the table stakes are going to be that I, as a developer, I don't want to have anything on my desktop. Uh, I, or I just want to. I just want to run everything in your in your in your cloud environment, uh, and that's going to be the new game. And what about the, what's the attitude toward tooling? I mean, are developers are they glomming on to sort of their tools? Do they want yeah. to be agnostic? Can you make <coughs> tooling tooling agnostic? So I love too much. So, uh, the first thing is is that you have to let the developers use whatever tools they want to use. And what what I said is how ten years ago everyone. Uh, web IDs, um, sorry, not web IDs, desktop IDs like Eclipse and Visual Studio, um, but changed. Uh, you know, if you five years ago, what people were using, they were using made editor. Now they're all using Sublime Text. Um, and they're, what are they doing for for their source controlled integration? Um, they're using uh, command line tools like Git. Uh, instead of everything being integrated into an ID, so I think that we're at this sort of this funny point where Developers are grabbing whatever they can to get their get their job done, and so the change I see uh, as as a person who develops tools is that I think that we're going to the, the pendulum is going to swing back, and we're going to start to see uh, a lot of these tools be more tightly integrated into like a into a, a single cohesive tool that lets developers be really productive. So a lot of those, if I correctly, a lot of the bespoke tools that we see today will be sort of invisible, or or, or... no, uh, so. That may be a long-term view. I think for right now, though, uh, we have to support everyone, uh, and we have to make sure that everyone is going to be successful. Um, I might say direction, but the reality is is that developers are using Vi and Emacs, uh, and there's been you know more sophisticated alternatives for a long time. So I don't imagine that's going to change. Um, you have to, you really have to bring your um, Bring your cloud development environment to to the developers. So let them use whatever tools they want. But you know, uh, as as a trend, what I say is is uh, these things are going to become increasingly because it's it's a it's a pain right now. So you get a little action on Twitter. I was just looking at the screen, and uh, the tooling thing comes up a lot. So that's really you hit a you hit, yeah. hit a nerve oh, there. And the whole fabric. Developers are so sensitive about tools. Uh, here's a really silly example: a dark theme or a light theme. And developers are extraordinarily passionate about that, and you'll find that it's about 50. Uh, the amount of time developers spend tweaking hotkeys and fonts, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Developers really want that customized tool that exactly suits what they want. All right, so we do. know how developers think. They're crazy, crazy is what creates the innovation. <laughs> um, but no, they have to be, because the tooling's everything. But let's sure. take it to the next level. Um, explain the, uh, the sync product, live sync, because now we're getting into the complicates. We know developers are, are like that. They like their things neat and their tools the way they like them, their hammers and and all the stuff that they build with. But now when you bring a cloud in it, you have a old model of local host pumps into the environment, someone's orchestrating it, whatever the purpose is. But now with DevOps, it's exactly infrastructure as code. There's now this new middle ground that you guys are attacking with live live sync. Right. Can you explain these are the Amazon. Do they have it? Do they don't have it? What is this? Is a really cool thing. I want to just expand that. A little sure. Bit. So as far as I know, no Amazon. Amazon doesn't have this. Um, let, let me explain what what it does. Um, a developer is in their code editor, and they have the application. What Live Sync gives them the capability of doing every time they save a change in their code editor, um, the application uh, the the application is updated. Now, right now, our support support is 
for, for Node.js applications, um, where you don't necessarily have a compilation step. But going forward, one of the ideas is um, to, as you make a change, uh, incrementally compile the, compile, compile the, uh, the code and, and, uh, and figure out the best way to, to put that into the, into the running environment. So, I mean, there's similar, similar offerings where you're, in, you're effectively mounting your development space directly in your running application, but this is really a little bit different. different. This, the idea of, of live sync is to, is, to comp is to put this in the flow of everything that's involved uh, in getting your code from, from, from the developer who's making the change through, through potentially through a, uh, a compilation step, uh, a minification step, you know, uh, a transpilation, there's a, a zillion transforms here, uh, and directly into your running app. Full life cycle is really what you're talking about. And yeah. how was that managed? What's the, what's the, how do you get visibility into that? Um, so, and, and what are the metrics around that? Uh, well, first off, everything we do in the web ID, we've got metrics, so we really, we've got a good idea of what, what the user's doing. Uh, and likewise, if you, there's, a, there's, a, the, uh, there's a command line client for, for Bluemix Live as well. Uh, and we know, so we know what, how frequently, for example, a developer is saving, how, how frequently they're making changes, how frequently that might result in um, leaving an incomplete file, something that isn't going to be valid JavaScript or valid HTML. Um, the, but, but apart from that, I, I mean, um, the way to think about this is we're trying to replicate uh, the developer's experience on the local desktop. So there, there, aren't, there aren't actually a ton of uh, analytics uh, around exactly what the developer's doing, because um, probably because that's not the point. We're just trying to, we're trying to move the developer from developing their app to developing into the cloud. And so that's more what we're measuring. So the metric is happy, productive developer? Yes, <laughs> happy, productive developer. Was the developer able to take that, that angular sample and uh, immediately up and running in the cloud, uh, were they able to take a sophisticated, a larger sophisticated application and hit the deploy to Bluemix button and have a fully created uh, development environment where they can begin to hack and make changes uh, and see what, see, see what the app just cloned is all about. You know, we always like to talk about, you know, fashion and tech. Um, what's fashionable? What's the new suit, if you will, the new flavored you know, wine that the developers love. Is it is it Erlang? You mentioned some of the you know sure. the languages. Uh, I mean, some you always the favorites pop up. Some are trending, some are relevant. Right. Could you just right. share just for the folks who aren't in inside the ropes? Sure. Well, I mean, obviously, I, I so I work on the uh, on the uh, JavaScript JavaScript standards. So I think JavaScript is uh, it's come a long way, baby. <laughs> um, but uh, and Node languages. is doing well. Node is doing well, and with yeah. the Node Foundation, that's a huge step forward. It, alleviates a lot of the concerns, uh, yeah. you know, some of the larger companies like IBM, Microsoft might have uh, about using Node. Uh, other languages, I'm a polyglot, I love languages. Um, I quite like Go. Uh, I see Go being used a lot in, uh, in, in places like Docker and certainly cloud. Um, Java is still, still Java Certainly, huge. and Node has brought it to the server side, so that's changed the game a bit on the real-time side. Mm -hmm. um, and Redis, Docker, these have emerged as awesome new things for yep. cloud. So I think, uh, so right now, everything that we're doing is, is uh, for live sync is for Cloud Foundry, but that's, that's going to shift into, into the Docker space. Uh, currently, developers are creating these little mini sandboxes on their local machine using uh, Vagrant and Docker. And so what I see going forward is we've got we've to figure out the same thing in uh, in a cloud environment if we want to make our, uh, our our Bluemix developers successful. So when wh what is the uh, mindset of the developer? Because you know when you get to the front lines, developers have to be closer to customers. Which you know back in my day, right? You know, you keep the developers away from the customer. Now you're getting closer to the customer. Design's a big part of it, but also Absolutely. virtualization is a lot of stuff going on in virtualization that's changing the game. Could you like take us through the the current state of the developer mindset that's relevant around how they view these things? Do they not care about virtualization, or they care about it? Do they care about, I mean, obviously customers, yeah. are, they, are they more, have more affinity towards customer interactions? Can you just share kind of how that's evolving? So I can't directly to the customer, but I can tell you, talk to you about the developer mindset uh, around virtualization. Uh, 
Uh, I've been developing software for a long time, and I used to always do everything on my on my local disk. Um, and then and then started to have to you know deploy my applications into an environment that really was uh, less and less like what, what I was running on my local disk. Uh, and that's when things like uh, VirtualBox, Vagrant, uh, they came in, and you know, and, and vSphere came in. And became important because I could then uh, create a virtual environment similar to uh, what my production uh, was. The problem with that is it was ridiculously heavyweight, uh, and if I was if I was um, developing more than just a single server, it became a real pain. Uh, and then so then tools like Vagrant came along and Docker. Like I think Docker was a you know an old suddenly became hot. Um, and time was timing was pretty critical, it, well, right? Timing is always and how critical. they tweak the too, how yeah, they yeah. use open source by having that contribution recycle in, right? Yeah, the that container, timing yeah. is everything, as they say, right? I timing mean, is amazing. everything. What has happened? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, Docker came from nowhere to like huge. Uh, same thing with Node. Nowhere. Node, yeah. Like Ryan, did did Ryan really see that this was going to be something that was going to be? He's one thing? of our most all-time cube views of all time, uh, uh, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan Dahl. You know yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that. He's a rock star. So uh, I mean, yeah, it's well, pretty incredible. And it, it kind of, but it to the, you know, Jeff Jonas term, the observation space, the bigger space of developers now that are, you know, can play in that in that field. Simplification. Is, you bet. I, it's I think really, it's, it's got to be exciting from a developer standpoint. I mean, yeah. yes and no, right? Some of the hardcore, it is, it is. The, you know, the old, the old school's like, oh, well, back in the day, but you think about no. the innovations that are occurring. This is standpoint. awesome. Like, I can remember developing, um, you know, Java web apps long time to install things like a server and all that sort of crap. Wasted time. Now, now it's like, yeah. go get the Docker image, bang, you're done. And so I just I just see more, and there'll be something, like the next Docker that's going to come come along, and I just I bet its its adoption cycle will be even faster than what we saw with Docker. What, so. Why do these things happen? I mean, we always speculate, we want to get your opinion, we we'll want share my taint, we say it all the time. Why? bring up? I mean, like, grow like a weed. Because they, have to be relevant. they save time. They save time. Why did Docker become so, so, so and fast so quickly? Uh, because it saves time, and it saves resources. Uh, when, if you were running virtual box on your machine, these things were heavyweight. You could only run three or four things on a really big server. Now with Docker, you can run a ton of these things. Uh, and, and so it just saves you a ton of time, saves you resources. Um, you know, it lets you lets you get up and running and coding faster, changes, have them reflected in your production environment quicker. So that's why these things. So the question I always ask the Bluemix guys that we talk to um, our engineers on, because we're on Amazon heavily, is why Bluemix? Convince me to go for this. Most people are like, well, no, I'm comfortable with Amazon. I'm talking Bluemix. It's kind of new, you know, Pivotal's involved. Right. It's all this kind of having going on. Bottom line, I don't want to get screwed. Right. That's kind of the psycho, I'm paraphrasing, obviously no one says that, but that's kind right. of the mindset um, of a developer, because that's what the way they think. Right, so, so I mean. What's the comfort blanket that you guys can offer them, the little blankie or uh, you know. Well, I mean, what I can say is is the, is the way IBM works with these, these first off, Cloud Foundry and, and work with Docker, we're working directly with them. Uh, we're not just using it and uh, saying, isn't it great? Uh, we're actually right there. You got some chops behind it. You guys are putting some energy in you it. You bet. Huge. Yeah, and, and a lot of energy, a lot of uh, And the reason that's important is that um, we can go in and, and then get the changes that we want uh, that make sense for our customers uh, in that environment. Um, so I, I think that's a huge advantage. Great lift too, rising top of all boats right. in that open core kind of open source model, right? The other thing is is that Bluemix is not one thing. It's not Cloud Foundry, it's not Docker. It's, it's a, I think, yeah. uh, an ideal. And I can't, actually I don't work directly with the, with the Fabric team, but I, I don't think of Bluemix as just, I think of it as, as the IBM cloud. It's and, IBM's and, version with a little and, bit of stuff from the cores, right? Things will come and go, and... Uh, and uh, well, the thing people don't know about that we'll share here is six, I mean, Cloud Foundry is an open source initiative that are foundations independent. So there was, they started with the That's Cloud Foundry, which was people kind of like, mm, but what happened was, all Maritz, gathered folks around, IBM one of them, and yep. said we're going to create this foundation of governance that's proven, Right. and that was the stability that was needed. Since then, it's been explosive. That's right, so we have our guys go and work directly with the, with the, with the, the folk from Pivotal, and it's, uh, you know, 
We pair with them and they pair with us and it's not, it's not, uh, we actually are, are very, very, very uh, in, in an interleaved fashion with. Changer too for that, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, final question. Um, what's next? What are people not talking about that they should be talking about from a developer standpoint? Hmm. I was just bud being thrown around by the big guys. You know, the, the mantra is ship with, ship with code, lead with code is still open source paradigm. Hmm. What should people be, be looking at that might not be paying attention because it's not that sexy or might not be written about on the blogs or whatnot? Um, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm on the same point again. The big change that's, that, that we're going to see in the next year or two is the developers are going to stop doing their development locally. Uh, they're going to do all of their work uh, in the cloud. Um, you know, just at home, for example, my wife, uh, if I install Docker and Vagrant and all that crap on, on, on my machine at home, she'll freak out. So I need to put that on additional machines, and, and that's a hassle, I have to manage that. So the, the big, big change that we're going to see in the next year or two is uh, developers are going to move all of their development off their local machine out into the cloud. Simon, KE, thanks for joining us on theCUBE from a developer perspective, great insight, uh, great to see you uh, bring that historical perspective and what's on the mind of developers here at the IBM show in Mandalay Bay. This is the queue. We'll be right back with more signal and data to share here. We're open source media. We love open source. We are media developers, Dave. We love to pump out that content and share with you. Uh, it's open, it's free, no walled garden. Go to siliconangle.tv. Go to Interconnect Go for a new digital experience, a new experiment that's going on, all the trending items, all the VIP influence, all the data is there. Great experience. Look at the live streams. We're part of that. This is the queue. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>